Hey guys, welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. This video is going to be a bit of a follow-up tutorial regarding the last video that I made about applying labels to the side of an object using Arnold Render. So first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone that commented and sent me private messages as well as sent me scene files showing me different methods and different ways of doing it. So thank you for that. I certainly do appreciate it. And even though I may not have replied back to every comment, just know that I did read them all and I did open up all the files that were sent to me to look at them. So again, thank you. All right, so what we're mainly going to be focusing on here is just one of those methods that seems to be pretty quick and easy to use, and that's going to be camera projection. Now, I'm sure most of you Arnold guys already know how to do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and quickly go through the process just to show you the way that I've set this up and perhaps maybe if I do something wrong or if there's an easier way of doing it then you guys can show me. Alright so we want to apply two labels to the side of this object and let me jump into my camera first and you can see I've just added these two little ports here and I just want to apply a label underneath them. So how do we do this? Alright well the first thing we want to do is create a new material. So I'm going to create a new Arnold surface standard surface. I'm going to open up the network editor. I'm going to disconnect that. And this standard surface, we want to change the color to black because I'm just going to stick with something very basic. This is going to be a flat, diffused, black plastic type of material. And I'm going to change the roughness to 0.5 and the index of refraction will make 1.3. I'm going to go over here into the basic tab and I'm just going to rename this to base black. All right, now I'm also going to duplicate it and I'm going to rename this duplicate to power label color. All right, so we want to grab an image node. So let's type in image in the search, grab the image drop it in, it's going to bring up the window here to look for an image, and I'm just going to use this uh, black and white power image here. All right, now we want to get a camera projection node. Now this camera projection node over here, it's asking for a camera. And the only camera that I have in the scene right now is the main camera that I'm looking through, and I don't want to use that. So I'm going to control click and drag to duplicate this camera and I'm going to name it Power. And I'm going to drag it down here into the uh, link list here for the camera. So I'm going to connect the image node into the input side of the camera projection node over to the mask. And now what we need is a layer node. So let's grab the layer node here. And the layer node is pretty easy to understand. It gives you eight layers that you can stack on top of one another, and each one of those layers has the ability to use an alpha channel. All right, so what we want to do is we want to connect this base black for layer one. So we're just going to pipe that over into layer one. And the power label color, this here depends on whatever color you want your label to be. In most cases, it's probably going to be white, but you can make it blue or orange or whatever. So we're, we're just going to stick with white. So I'm going to change the color here over to white. And we're going to pipe this into layer two. All right, now this camera projection node needs to be piped in over here as layer two alpha. All right, and now we can take this material Apply it over to the object, and I'm going to get the IPR window going. All right, so now we can connect this over to the Arnold Beauty. All right, so you can see it's kind of not looking correct. Okay, so I think the reason for this is because I had the wrong one selected. So let's choose the base black. That needs to go back to black. The power needs to be white. All right, so uh, the reason for that didn't work the first time is because I had the wrong one selected. This one I, is the one that I changed to white, 
and that one was black. So just make sure that you have the right node selected. It can be a little confusing, especially if you have quite a bit of nodes in there. So the base black is black and the power label color is white. All right, so you can see that it's looking kind of odd. And the reason for that is because when we duplicated the power camera, it's in the same identical position as the main camera. So we just need to change the position of the power camera. So I'm gonna go into a top view and I'm going to rotate that and zero out the pitch and bring this over line it up and we need to bring it down this is where the IPR window really comes in handy because you can see where everything is going to be lined up at all right so we want to just bring that up a little bit probably about there All right, so you can see that the camera projection label here looks a little odd. This almost has an oval shape to it, like an egg shape. So let's go back over into the material. Click on the camera projection node, and you can see the aspect ratio is set to 1.333. So we need to change this aspect ratio over to 1. And now the image is now projected correctly. Now, as far as I know, uh, the way I'm understanding this is that this aspect ratio here is calling for the aspect ratio of the image that you're using. So I know that this image is a one-to-one -one ratio, so this needs to be set to one. So you may need to experiment around with this aspect ratio uh, property here in order to get the proper projection for your material. Uh, however, in most cases, what I recommend that you do is prep the image ahead of time in Photoshop. Uh, perhaps maybe I can get into that a little later to tell you why. Uh, if I can remember to, uh, I'll show you at the end of this uh, video tutorial why it's good to prep your images ahead of time. So just make sure that you got the proper aspect ratio there. All right, so now we can take the camera and if we back the camera away, you can see the image is getting bigger. And when we pull it closer, it's getting smaller. So I think that right there will work just fine. All right, now we wanna apply one more, and I think it should be pretty straightforward how to do it. So what we wanna do is we want to go back over into the material, and we wanna get another image node. We could just search for it, or you could just control, click, and drag. I'm just going to drag a new one in, and let's just get the reset, why not? So let's get reset, camera projection, all right, so we need to duplicate the power camera, and we'll call this reset. And we need to drag the reset down into there. Make sure you got them correct. That one's a power, this one's a reset. Aspect ratio is one. Connect that to that. And we also need to uh, connect this into the layer 3 alpha. But before we do, uh, again, this is totally dependent upon if you want both of these labels to be the same color or if you want them to have different colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate one to show you uh, to have different colors here for number 3 rather than reusing number 2. All right, so this one is the power label color. This one here will be reset label color and this one needs to go into uh, let's see we're going to use layer three and then the camera projection for this new uh, reset image this will go into the alpha for layer three all right now let's take the reset color and let's change that from white over to something like i don't know maybe a blue color maybe All right, so we're going to need to take the reset camera. Let me close this down. The reset camera needs to come over and we need to rotate it into position to where it's going to be lined up. It's going to be flush. 
I think more than likely 125 degrees will be what we need. All right, that looks good. So now we want to back this up. And there's our reset. Let's pull that up just a little bit, maybe a little more inward. So there's our reset label, and there is our power label. Now there is one thing that I would like to point out, and that is if your object is going to be animated, if you're going to be moving the object, make sure that your cameras that you're using for camera projection are a child of the object. Otherwise, if you go to move your main object, and I'll just rotate it, notice what's happening here is that the cameras are not moving. That means the cameras are still projecting, but the object moved, and now it's being projected and kind of distorted. And that's not going to work. So what we want to do is make these cameras a child of the object. But rather than putting them in there being under the subdivision surface object, Usually what I do is I just create a null object. This acts as the master null. And then I take the cameras as well as the object and drop them into the null. Now when you move the null, the cameras move with it. And you can see that the projection is staying the way it should be. The cameras are moving with the object. And one other thing that I was kind of thinking of when I was testing these different ideas was that what happens if an object moves between the path of the camera and the side of the object where the image is being projected? In other words, will the projection be distorted or blocked by another object? And the answer to that is no. So if we were to create just something like a cube, and I'll just kind of shrink this down a little bit. And we were to take this cube and move it in front of the line of sight here. We're just putting it in the line of sight between the camera and the object. So you can see it's actually blocking the view. But if we zoom in here, you can see the reset label is still there. So that's actually pretty good that an object can move in the way uh, in that projection line, but yet it's not affecting it in any way. That's pretty good. And obviously that would make sense because uh, that projection is being used as the material on that object and it's not on the cube. All right, so there's one more thing that I want to take a look at. And if we flip around to the back side of the object, you can see there's a bit of a problem. What's happening here is that these labels are being projected not only on the front side, but it's going through to the back side. And this is the problem that was occurring uh, with the standard Cinema 4D material that can be corrected using the front and back option. And this was the problem in V-Ray that requires a bit of a workaround to use a blend material with a set selection in order to prevent this from happening. So here in Arnold, this is actually a pretty simple fix. All you need to do is go back into the material Click on the camera projection node and disable back facing. We'll do the same for that one. And now the materials are no longer on the back. Now they only show up on the front. All right, so as I said, we're gonna talk quickly about why you should prep your images ahead of time in Photoshop. This is something that I may have gone over before. I'm not quite sure if I did or not, but just very quickly to show you why you should do it. Uh, let's say that we have uh, a cube. All right, and let's say that you want to project an image onto the side of this cube. Okay, now I'm just going to be using standard Cinema 4D materials to show you this. All right, so if we create a new Cinema 4D material, and in the color channel, I'm going to load up an image. And I'm just going to use the reset. We're going to take this and drop it over here onto the cube. And I'm just going to change this over to flat. All right, now in order to position this correctly, we need to activate the texture mode as well as the axis tool here, which is enable axis. Now, if you notice, as soon as we did this, a yellow grid comes up. 
What I want you to do is I want you to pay close attention to the aspect ratio of the grid. It's a perfect square. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that it's going to be projecting your image by default in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you're using an image that's 16 by nine, let's say you're using something that's maybe 1280 by 720, or maybe you're using 1920 by 1080, whatever it might be, if it's a widescreen ratio, it's going to automatically be projected as one to one, which means you're gonna to have to grab the scale tool and scale it out in order to fit properly. That's why you should take your image into Photoshop first and correct it and make it a one to one. This usually means adding to the top and the bottom. Uh, I think that's probably the canvas size. If you go into Photoshop and you drag your uh, widescreen image in, you can go to canvas, canvas size, and then you can make it a perfect one-to-one uh, -one ratio image. Then you can actually drop that into your material and then it will be projected correctly. So just keep that in mind that whenever you start using this projection, it's going to automatically do it as a one-to-one -one ratio. And if you don't do it right, then you're gonna to have to squash and stretch in order to get it to fit correctly. So that's why it's always a good idea to prep your images ahead of time, uh, especially images that are odd sizes. Sometimes you might find an image online that you wanna use as a texture, and it'll have a really weird resolution to it. So it's always good to go ahead and just prep these things ahead of time in Photoshop before bringing them into Cinema 4D. That way they get projected correctly onto your object. All right, guys, so I think that pretty much wraps up this video. I think I covered just about everything. Uh, so as always, guys, thank you for watching. Again, thank you for helping me uh, with the previous video about how, how to set all this up with uh, uh, projecting these images uh, using Arnold Render. All right, so uh, one more thing. If you guys have Instagram, you're welcome to follow me on Instagram. I made one uh, a while back. I really don't do anything with it, uh, at least not recently. I haven't put much on there. I uh, usually just post artwork and stuff. So if you have Instagram, if you're into it, uh, feel free to follow me if you like. It's Shane.Benson79. So feel free to uh, follow me if you want to do that. All right, guys. So as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.